Dear friends, welcome to Eurosatry. We are at the magnificent KNDS booth, which you recognize as beautiful. It's the Caesar, is that it? That's it, exactly. We are with Olivier Faure, the renowned specialist on Caesar, and the feedback from Ukraine. Is everything correct so far? So far, so good? The color of the Ukrainian version is different from what we're used to, but that's not the main change. There's much more to it than that. That change. So, before we talk about this particular version, can we go back to Caesar's youth? Why did we decide to have a cannon that is not towed, but is on wheels? So actually, the initial goal was to replace both towed cannons and self-propelled cannons with a single piece of artillery at a time. In fact, you had the AUF-1 in the past and also the TRF-1 and the idea was to make a single cannon on a truck platform. The Caesar Mark II, which you see in front of you, will be produced for France, Belgium and Lithuania starting next year. How much does it weigh? It's the Mark II. It weighs about 26.7 tons. Yes, it's air transportable in an AIN of 439 yards, while slightly heavier than the M1 currently deployed in Ukraine, which has been used in Iraq, Mali and Afghanistan, it remains air transportable. It's a little heavier since the M1 is the lightest self-propelled 52 caliber cannon in the world as it always weighs 17.7 tons. And when we compare it, for example, with systems like the M777, we know it has an excellent reputation in Ukraine. The Ukrainians say it and repeat it, it's the best artillery cannon they've ever had access to, especially compared to the laid towed artillery. The M777 exemplifies the existing attrition rate. Nearly one third of the provided M777s have been destroyed. Because basically, when you put it down, it takes hours before you can move it behind. That one, how long after we shoot, can we move it? That one, how long after we shoot, can we move it? He is extremely fast. Most of the time, it's about 45 seconds. He has left the firing position. And so how do we secure our position and therefore precision at the impact? So actually, you have an inertial unit. So from Saffron, right here exactly, this box that is there. And it's the Geonics unit from Saffron. It's extremely precise. And on the Mark I version, you had the Sigma 30 unit, which was the previous generation, which was very precise, but still had less good performance than this one. So now it's a metric precision for the vehicle's position. Uh, it's a very, very high precision. So, so you have about 16 feet, four inches of precision, even after driving 62 miles, etc. So it's extremely excellent. And then what is the precision and the distance, the range of the cannon itself? So the precision, it often depends on the range precisely, as you just said. But in any case, what is certain is that the CISA, it has always been defined by the gunners. Uh, it was first used in operation in 2011 in Afghanistan. Uh, it was one of my friends who commanded the 11th Rama, it's Thierry Laval, who told me that this cannon has absolutely phenomenal precision. So you are practically forced to make different adjustments if you don't want all the shells to fall in the same hole. So it is very well known among French gunners for being extremely precise. Uh, but indeed, beyond 18.6, four miles, all 52 caliber guns, they still have a relative inaccuracy, which is simply due to the powders. It's the same with these guns. So 52 calibers, we're talking about the length of the barrel. Is that it? Yes, 52 calibers as it's 52 times the 6.1 inches tube width. We should clarify that you are originally an artilleryman, so you still are. We remain an artilleryman all our life. What has actually changed on the field? Does that mean that to hit a target, we shoot fewer goals? Does that mean we have a guarantee of a systematic goal shot by firing three shots and then leaving? Uh, in fact, compared to the 39 calibers in so far as you can shoot much longer, if you have a target, the maximum range of the 39 caliber is 14.91 miles. If you shoot with the Caesar at 14.91 miles, you are almost certain that the shells fall roughly all in the same place, whereas there would be significant dispersion on a 39 caliber and our precision therefore remains important up to a fairly high distance. And we sometimes seek to have a precisely ahead, a coverage area that is a little wider. For example, if we go, we know that a gathering that will take place in a football field there. If we shoot all in the same place with the old calibers, there will be a distribution, but there suddenly it will be almost too precise. Yes. In theory, it can be almost too precise, but you adjust the number of shells according to the precision of the cannon. When you, when you shoot at targets located in the distance, in fact, you apply a coefficient depending on the very great distance. If it is really at very, very long distance, you shoot proportionally a little more shells. We have... We talked about the interest of having a navigation war with very, very important precision 
we talked about the fact that they aim super, super well. And finally, we used it now outside of Mali, Afghanistan. What have we learned in Ukraine? Excellent question in Ukraine. We realized that the architecture of the Caesar made it particularly suitable for high intensity combat before Ukraine. There were a lot of gunners in the world who said high intensity war requires a tracked armored vehicle. And we realized in Ukraine that a lot of qualities of the Caesar make it one of the cannons that has the best survival rate. That is to say that there are very few Caesars proportionally that have been destroyed compared to all those that have been deployed. And it has been deployed for more than two years. And you have approximately a destruction rate. It was in the month of March, about 10 percent. And you have tracked armored vehicles of 52 calibers. The rate of destruction was about 32 percent. Also for the M777, about a third of which have been destroyed. And you also had guns like the Susanna II, which are armored with a turret and which have a destruction rate that is still quite high. And you realize in reality that this is not a coincidence. And in fact, there are characteristics on the architecture of the Caesar that allow the Ukrainians to use tactics that make this gun extremely efficient. Can we go into detail? Yes, of course. The spade's position is quite high in a low firing position that allows uh, shooting ammunition directly from the ground. So the Ukrainians very often have placed ammunition and charges on a future firing position. They carry no ammunition and charge during movements. That way, if they are hit by a hovering ammunition, there is no secondary explosion. There will be damage, but no destruction. And you can do it with the Caesar, but there are many guns with which you can't do it. So you are forced to transport it with the ammunition and charges. And so if you are hit by a Lancet, you will be destroyed. When he goes to resupply ammunition, he will spend two minutes at the resupply position. You have some guns that are very automated, which will spend a little less time at the firing position, say two minutes, but they will spend 20 minutes at the ammunition resupply position. And today, what detects a gun? It's not at all mostly a trajectory radar. It's rather the drones. And so a drone Caesar cannon that is being resupplied, for example, 10 minutes, it's already been uh, eight minutes since the Caesar would have left, you see. There's another parameter. It's the fuel consumption on our Caesars. It's extremely low. You take very little time to refuel. You have 52 caliber cannons that are armored, tracked and weigh about 50 tons. It takes you 15 minutes to refuel them. And we're talking about high intensity. That is how many shots per day are we firing today with a Caesar cannon? Let's say the maximum that has been fired is over 150 shots in one day. Yes, but that's a bit of a record. Yes, but it remains a huge. Nevertheless, the production capacity of cannons and not vehicles in its entirety has been tripled. Is that it? Yes, absolutely. Since the beginning of the conflict. So there is also an interesting follow up. We can replace the cannons with their wear. Yes, absolutely. We produce much faster than at the start of the conflict. We have gotten ourselves in marching order. What's the difference compared to version 8.8? .8? Because we say precisely that we like mobility. We like lightness. The Danes chose this version and also sent it to Ukraine. Do the Ukrainians ultimately say that one of the two systems is more suitable or more efficient? The Ukrainians say they like both and you have the same tube and the same cylinder head on both. The cannon's heart consists of a highly secure tube and cylinder head. Pierre André Moreau, who created the Caesar cannon, had decided when switching to a 52 caliber, you have a chamber that is six gallons in powder volume. Uh, it's considerably more than on a 39 caliber, which is about five gallons. He had said we need a screw breech because it's much safer than a wedge breech. And so that's been proven multiple times. It's a choice that was absolutely excellent. It's a safe cannon. There's no shooting accident ever. So it's an extremely reliable cannon. So the Ukrainians already, I've seen one personally at a show that told me with his accent in English that it was the best thing about Caesar. To answer your question, the 8.8 has 36 shells, while the 6.6 has 18. I think it's better suited for a very mobile fight, the 8.8, since you are more autonomous in ammunition. But as I just said, for the war in Ukraine, it's a fairly static war. Ukrainians prefer not to deploy cannons with ammunition on board. In Ukraine, when people shoot outside, many specialists in the world of artillery will tell you shooting under protection is crucial. And that's wrong. In Ukraine, that's wrong. Uh, because if you are outside, sometimes they have been attacked by a hovering ammunition. If they are outside, they hear the approaching hovering ammunition. If you are in a turret cannon, you don't hear the threat coming. And you have a lot more personnel who are killed on the cannons. We, we will also add that as a result, the version 8.8 .8 armor is a little bit superior. But that's a completely personal opinion in reality. It's the mobility. 
and then what matters in the canon is that and then this place there in all cases whether you are armored or not it's that which breaks in reality and it's that which loses the canon in its entirety we saw that this is a new version of Caesar it's an evolution so I already have the impression that it is a little wider there is a little more space in the cockpit what modifications are there the cabin is significantly more armored compared to the first version the Caesar Monk 1 but we still have six wheels though yes we still have six wheels the engine is twice as powerful but will save time on battery setup and exit it's a cannon we think thanks to the engine thanks to the automatic gearbox which will be a little bit better off-road we also have other qualities like a health and usage monitoring system system that allows for predictive maintenance so it's really a much more modern cannon big data we collect big data for predictive maintenance it's the evolution I saw something, I don't know if it's also true, that there was work to integrate artificial intelligence questions to reduce the number of shells needed to reach the goal. Is this something that is really being considered? Thank you for asking me this question. There have been many articles claiming that it was necessary to have artificial intelligence to improve the accuracy of Caesar. That's nonsense, it's bullshit. The Caesar is extremely accurate. In fact, it's a misinterpretation. You have a lot of drone systems being used in Ukraine. These civilian drones are less precise than military-grade drones. I'm going to take the example of Thales' Spy Ranger, for instance. Example, you have the ability to associate extremely precise coordinates immediately when you see an image. Military drones have the precision needed for such tasks, while civilian drones lack the accurate coordinates required. And artificial intelligence, you bought, you're right, I've been a bit provocative, but uh, artificial intelligence can precisely improve the accuracy of the coordinates of the targets that are assigned to the artillery. But you won't improve the precision of the Caesar, which is already excellent. Well, so, mistake in all the media. You all got it wrong. I hadn't written it. I'm happy. We integrate artificial intelligence to compensate for the low accuracy of civilian drones used to extract global positioning system coordinates. There is no habit extraction system with military systems. Clicking on the pixel provides the exact frozen location, such as a tank to be destroyed. On the other hand, the Caesar precisely hits targets with the highest field precision possible. I couldn't have said it better. Oh my gosh. Thank you very much. We hope you enjoyed it. See you soon. Subtitling 501.